Welcome to the Shooting Show. This week we're heading back up to southwest Scotland for a stalking experience with Chris Dalton. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Last couple of days on the stags, up with Graham. Um, got some nice footage actually. Lovely day, quite a nice sort of late, uh, sort of mid-October kind of day really. Uh, we had a bit of issue with the weather on uh, on the early part of the week, but for the filming day it was quite good, which was nice. Um, we're pretty much on on top of our call, so really I'm just looking at taking one or two sort of young knobbers out. We're up at Kinnaird. It's it's lovely actually. We're just finishing off the the stags now. There's been a a group of stags in a little kind of depression, a bit of a hollow. We're going to try and get into them this afternoon. We've not got long. Um, maybe take one of the youngsters out, stag knobber. Really just to finish off our, our call before we start on the hinds. We've got a lovely afternoon, the sun's going down. Um, so we're just going to go and see what we can do. Nice bit of breeze. We're going to have to work kind of round to the left and then trying to come into this hollow to see if we can get into them and uh, see how we go. Steady. Okay, see the dog, we've just crossed the track of this wind pattern of the stags now. You can see the dog. She just pulled forward, shoved her nose in here, that's telling her there's been deer up here. You see that I'm not interested, so she now has come back. Now she's dragging me away again. Okay, you can see the duck. She's been indicating the whole way around and what she's picking up is about, I don't know, we can see seven or eight. There's probably more just behind that knoll, um, right out in the middle of this, of this valley. Um, the problem is the sun's not gone down yet, so it's still shining right across us. <clears throat> don't actually see much of an approach into them, although the wind's perfect be quite difficult to get within within shot of them and the also the other thing we've got to consider is that the light will go very quickly and so at the end of the day ultimately we've got to recover as well so it's another consideration not just shooting the deer but I want to get the deer back to the larger in good condition I don't like leaving deer out on the hill she's wondering why on earth we're not uh, making a beeline for them but I think there'll probably be some more around in in the shelter around the corner and I think we can get past these quite easily so I think we'll, uh, discretion being the better part of all, I think we'll leave these. So we got into uh, quite a long stalk actually. We got into a, a nice group that we're unaware of as we're kind of in a bit of a, a bit of a basin, which is in kind of a big quarry on the hill, quite sheltered from, from the wind. There's a group of uh, hinds about 150, 160 yards away in the dip here. But we've got the sun right in our face, so we actually can't film it. So we're just going to hope that sun goes behind the clouds so we can actually get around and and get a shot, um, but we'll see, see what happens. Nice afternoon, browsing quite happily, so we, we got in onto the, um, managed to get in onto the edge of a knoll, and then shot across uh, through the valley. Again, great place, because I can get the bike right in to recover the deer, so we can do a full gralic. So, really that was quite a nice stalk. Hopefully you should see all of that on camera. The lighter colour one is number two. It's stood wrong at the moment. Keep on it, I'll tell you before, I'll tell you when to get past, just turn now. Keep on it. Are you on it? Get it!
Not a lot of people um, use a dog on the hill. Um, it, it can be a bit of an encumbrance because sometimes you know you're crawling up gullies and things. But her colouring is fantastic actually and blends in really well, well with the heather. In fact, in in most covers, so it's not really a problem. She'll move a little bit, but I've never really. It's never been an issue when I've been stalking into anything. Where it is hugely advantageous, and you would think that in the open hill that you shoot a, a stag or you shoot a hind and it's whatever, 150, 200 yard away, you see it drops, gone straight down, it's really not going to be a problem to find it. Well actually it can be blinking difficult because some of the heather's quite deep, there's little gullies and corries and little streams, bits of rock, quite thick heather on the, on the larger stuff as well where the mature stuff is and it's incredibly difficult to actually find the deer. You don't really have in many cases a point of reference, you're kind of looking at a big open expanse of moorland and you kind of set off walking 200 yards to where you think the deer is. Um, you underestimate, overestimate it, walk past it. So it's blooming difficult without a dog. So I find her extremely useful because I know full well that if that deer's down, then I just kind of, she's off like a blinking whippet and I can see straight away where it is. So, you know, she's been used quite a bit during the stag season, more so when deer have run, um, but even when the deer's drop smack on the spot just to actually locate where the, where the deer's dead. Okay, where's it? Show me, show me. Show me, good girl, show me. Good girl. Good lass. Good lass. Good lass. Just sort of talking about ranges as well, I kind of briefly mentioned it there. You tend to find that on the hill you're shooting uh, at longer ranges. Um, a, you've got a bigger target, but B, you're in a landscape where there isn't a lot of cover often, so it might be going up and down a gully. So whilst I'm not a great advocate of long range shooting and I don't like some of the stuff you see on social media about the idiots posting shooting out to you know whatever ranges, it's absolutely nonsense. We're all about stalking, we're all about the field craft and we're all about getting into deer. Uh, fairly close ranges, eliminating any margin of error. On the hill, uh, often commonly we'll, we'll, we'll shoot out to 200, 220, maybe a bit more, but you're in a completely uh, bench rest position, you've practiced at those ranges. You're confident that you can put your round within a, a very small sort of group. So you'll see here that, you know, ranges we're shooting at, is, it's often round about the 180, 190, 200, 200 mark. Not because it's a bravado thing, not because uh, of any other reason we can't get in that close often. Um, we've got no cover to use and therefore you need to actually shoot from those ranges. But in order to do that, you know, we practice. We practice with the rifles, we've got good kit. The Hainel rifle in particular is superb, the one I've been using a lot now, um, is absolutely bang, bang accurate out of the box. Um, so I'm absolutely confident that, you know, I can put the round where I want to put it. And, you know, you see on the, on the footage, um, the deer's actually sort of part lung shot. One other thing we came in here for, apart from the fact it's blowing a hoolie outside and raining, um, is that these are actually um, the result of some of our stalking activities, both in Ayrshire actually and, and up on the estate at Kinnaird. Um, Graham's have been busy with the boxes and um, these are all kind of packed up now, last batch is ready to go out to, to clients. We don't do a lot of trophy hunting, um, big th thing in the media at the moment, a lot of talk about it, um, uh, mostly all nonsense. At the end of the day I've said many times if you're managing your deer correctly then it allows you the flexibility to take a few representative or occasionally trophy animals off the hill and this is a in terms of the stags that we will shoot, uh, the vast majority of what we're shooting are cull animals, weaker animals, poor animals, old animals, young animals. It's a small sample of what we actually shoot over the course of a year and is part of a very carefully structured deer management plan. Um, so the nonsense that I see around the press, it seems to be gaining a lot of momentum at the moment about trophy hunting, in inverted commas, is absolute flaming rubbish. Chris Dalton there doing things his way. And now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. 
The UK has a new majority government and Basque is already hard at work making sure incoming ministers recognise the value of shooting. They've reminded politicians that shooting supports the equivalent of 74,000 full-time jobs in the UK. A statement said Basque will be seeking early meetings with ministers. Achieving positive outcomes for shooting and facing up to the challenges remains Basque's priority and we will work with all sides in this parliament to achieve results which benefit shooting. Voting is now open in the nation's favourite shooting ground poll. Run by Clay Shooting Magazine, the annual vote selects the most loved ground in the UK, as well as giving out regional and discipline-focused awards and the coveted Best Breakfast Prize. Just use the form in Clay Shooting Magazine or vote online using the address on screen now. A 13-year-old girl has won one of the biggest prizes in shooting at the school's Challenge Grand Final at Oxford Gun Company. Bethany Norton took home an MG car after she won the girls' final, as did Ron Chipman who won the boys' final. Ron turned 17 this week and is already booking driving lessons. The series has now given away seven cars in the last five years. And finally, with just two weeks left to vote in the Great British Shooting Awards 2020, we take a look at one of the categories you can have your say in. This week it's the Gamekeeper of the Year Award, and the nominees are Roy Burrows, David Nesfield, Jeff Garrard, Bernard Moss, John Pyle. You can have your say in who wins. Head to greatbritishshootingawards.com to vote. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.